Hello everyone. So in this session we are going to study about the DNA fingerprinting. The DNA fingerprinting was discovered by Alec Jaffrey and uh, before this session we studied about the human genome project. In the human genome project we have come across so many things like uh, goals, aims and uh, the who invented that human genome project, who first started that project, why it is known as mega project and what is the short form of a uh, human genome project and uh, we also studied about the met methodologies and uh, after the methodologies we studied about the salient features while uh, doing the salient features of HGEP. Uh, 3164.7 the first salient feature is 3164.7 base pair I guess I told like that make it correct 3164.7 million base pair the human gene or sorry human uh, human body it consists this much of base pairs and uh, after that we also studied about the applications okay but uh, in this uh, dna fingerprinting we are starting with the uh, who discovered this discovery first we'll understand later we'll see dna fingerprinting first discovered by Alec Jaffrey Alec Jaffrey okay let me tell you one unique feature of a DNA fingerprinting 99.9% of human have same gene have same I'll use the word base pair okay that is much uh, suitable word than the genes okay so 99.9% .9 of humans have same base pairs then where is the dissimilarity so that we can conclude uh, by doing the fingerprinting here 0.1% of base pair are dissimilar dissimilar in individuals like if we compare with uh, us my DNA fingerprinting and uh, your DNA fingerprinting it will match 99.9% .9%. only 0.1% variation we can match only by seeing that 0.1 percent variation we can conclude yes I am different I am from uh, other uh, parent and uh, so the individuals are from different one okay it means no two individuals will be having same 100 percent same DNA fingerprintings where will be this different this variation uh, in uh, what is that DNA finger printing if you learned if you have know about the chromosome so the chromosome will be having the centromere and uh, the chromatid what I have drawn here so this is one homologous chromosome okay homologous chromosomes so in the class 11 we studied about the structure of chromosome and in while describing the structure of chromosome I guess I mentioned about the satellite chromosome satellite chromosome So this is all filled by DNA and this is also having a number of uh, strands of uh, DNA here it will be having the what satellite chromosome what is that satellite chromosome so consider this is one sat 
chromosome and this is a telomere and this is one uh, what centromere and uh, this is the the constriction which is present in between the centromere and chromatid is this is the first constriction that's why we are going to label this as primary constriction and this will be the secondary constriction above to that we have few more extension extension in this chromosome that extension is known as sad chromosome what is what will be there in that sac chromosome there will be the dna dna strands will be present but those dna's are non coding dna's they are not going to code to any proteins or to any rna's then what is the use of these dna's there is the answer these dna's what we mentioned now itself point one variation will be there in the base pair of two individuals that point one variation can find out by separating this dna base pairs how to set, separate just uh, in, the, in the last session itself we studied how many base pairs are present that much of million of base pair how to separate it how to make out like this is considered this is one strand and this is one strand of dna set, set by set base pair by base pair how to length how to stretch or how to separate the dnas it has one method okay so that method in this session itself we are going to understand that but uh, understand this in the dna fingerprinting to match two individuals what we have to do first we have to collect any sample of the the one individual and also we have to select or collect uh, the sample of another individual what we have to do now we have to separate their dna first we have to cut the dna and cut means make it in in the make it into fragments and then after fragment after fra fragmenting the dnas we have to separate it and then we have to match it we have to match from one individual individual dna to one more individuals dna okay so before that we'll understand this so before as i told you now about the satellite dna the dna is it is separated based on the separated based on the density gradient so the density is it will be much higher in this region it means you can see the difference between this dna and this dna it has a minimum dnas so the density will be low and it has a much or maximum dnas so that the density will be high so when we separate the chromosome based on the density gradient we'll get we will get two peaks two peaks in sense here the bulk dnas will be present this part is referred to this centro sorry chromatid and one more peak will get this part is mentioned as sad dna so just see this this peak and this peak this peak refers to the maximum content of dna and this peak refers to a minimum content of dna so 
for this satellite dna what we are going to do uh, what we are uh, studying further so the the satellite dna this satellite dna it has the repetitive sequences what will be there in the satellite dna it will be having the repetitive sequences of base pairs and further the satellite dna it has been classified into two types on what basis it has been classified into two types on the basis of the ratio of first i'm not telling the classification now first i am listing out the characters on those bases the satellite dna has been classified into not only two my dear students it has number of um, different number of uh, what classification only two type of classification only two type of uh, two types of satellite uh, dna we are studying in this uh, in in your uh, syllabus so first characteristic feature based on that the satellite dna is uh, classified the first one is the ratio of purines and pyrimidines it means how many a's are present how many t's are present or how many g's are present or how many c's are present a means adenine t means thymine g means guanine c means cytosine how many purines how many adenine and guanines are present and how many thymine and cytosine is present on this basis satellite dna it will get differ it means uh, it will be having two types the next is the length of sequence if this dna have a maximum length okay so on that basis also the satellite dna further classified into two and one more thing is there the number of repetitive units based on number of repetitive units so you have to remember this these three characteristic feature differentiate the sat dna it has been classified into mini satellite dna and micro satellite dna okay so mini sat dna and micro sat dna the mini satellite dna is used as variable number of tandem repeats so what is vntrs the vntrs is so many times in the examination they have asked to write a note on vntrs where it comes it comes under mini satellite so what is mini satellite this is the group comes under satellite dna what is satellite dna satellite dna is the part where uh, satellite dna actually it is not coding to any mrnas or further DNA, uh, proteins the satellite dna is not going to code for the proteins one thing second one is the satellite dna will be having number of repetitive sequences and next is this is the only unique dna where we can find out where it is having 0.1 variation of base pair in every individuals 
yes by observing this satellite dna where it is having point that point one variation point one percent of variation so that we can make out the difference between two individuals okay the next is the sequence show large portion of polymorphism sequence the which we sequence the repetitive sequence show large portion of polymorphism large portion of actually uh, first the first thing is what you have to remember the uh, high, uh, this sequence which sequence repetitive sequence show high degree of polymorphism and it makes large portion of human genome in the human body these satellite dnas will occupy a large genomes large portion and they show high degree of polymorphism polymorphism means poly means more than two morphism means in the morphology and by, by means of morphology we can see a high degree of uh, on the uh, high degree of variation in the dna sequences the next is we'll see the methods of dna fingerprinting how we can separate the dna just now we said from the dna for big based on the bent density gradient we can separate the dnas but it has its own procedure that procedure we are going to understand here which comes under the methods the first thing what we are doing here is isolation of dna from the individuals from the cell not from the individual isolation of dna from the cell it means what suppose we have a cell obtained from the sample which sample we are having now either it is a semen or it is a blood or it is a hair follicle so anything from any part of this sample uh, we can remember in our body in our body how many tissues are present how many cells are present how many different types of cells are present whatever you extract one cell from any part of the body you just extract one cell and observe the dna or study their uh, base sequences base pairs sequence of base pairs each and every cell in a human body i'm telling you in in one individual in a human body each and every individual individual cell will be having similar base pairs okay so similar base pair so because of that character we can obtain or we can collect the dna from any of the sample of a human body either it is a semen or it is a hair follicle or it is a blood sample or any uh, other uh, blood sorry body tissue <coughs> now what is our first method the first method is suppose consider here we are having a cell isolation of dna from cell means we have to dissolve this cell wall okay or digest this cell wall and first we have to treat it with the 
chilled ethanol so that it get precipitate and we can easily take out from the cell so that is known as isolation next is digestion the next is digestion digestion of what digestion of dna by restriction endonucleases of dna from restriction endonucleases r e n what is r e n it is an enzyme what it is doing it is making the dna into fragments what it is known as it is also known as molecular scissors after extracting the dna from cell we are making it into parts or we are making it into fragments the next is after the digestion separation of dna dna fragments by by using one technique one instrument known as electro forensis electrophoresis electrophoresis means what so this will be electrophoresis will be like uh, like this and it is uh, it connected by uh, some electric current okay and this will be filled by an agarose gel some cavities made in the agarose gel what we have to do we have to pour the samples by using micro pipette okay so what we have to don't draw this diagram so we have to pour we have to put the samples here and later so this is known as this is the electrophoresis in the electrophoresis what will be there agarose gel will be there that agarose gel will be a solid a semi solid agar uh, it's like a, it acts as uh, the nutrition like just a um, media it is agarose gel okay so that media um, in in that uh, agarose gel it will be having minute pores okay so how to prep, how to make that pores so some instrument will ke kept on in the agarose before putting the agarose gel after uh, getting semi solid after the after coming to the semi solid condition that uh, instrument will be taken out that makes the agarose gel media into small small pores in that pores the dna sample what we have taken that sample will be poured and the next is transferring of separated dna fragments to synthetic membranes such as next is blotting blotting means what transferring dna fragments into synthetic media known as nitrocellulose membrane can just continue it nitrocellulose membrane so when we pour the, the dna sample it will get separate like this okay mean 
time we also take dump so this is the sample of individual one and this will be the sample of individual two so what is our aim we are going to match their both their dna uh, fragments so this will be having the fragments so what next after this we can't study these fragments these lines we cannot make out so what we have to do further we have to take the blotting step or we have to do the blotting technique in this technique what we are doing we are placing the nitrocellulose membrane a nylon membrane a nitrocellulose membrane so that these dna fragments will get print on that membrane so so that, that because of that uh, because to study the dna fragments or dna fingerprints uh, by using a nitrocellulose membrane or by using the auto radiography we have to trace those fragments on one membrane known as nitrocellulose membrane so what we have now we have a membrane and that on that membrane we have the dna prints dna fragment prints okay so the next technique we'll see now hybridization with V and TR probe hybridization using labeled V and TR TRs probe. I I forgot to mention this variable number of tandem tandem repeats. Just me write this. variable number of tandem repeats it forms or the short form is v and tr so v and tr why it is known as variable number of tandem repeats variable number so many numbers of repeated sequences number of repeated sequences will find will we will get from the satellite dna okay that satellite dna through that satellite dna we can make out the differences that point one differences from the uh, criminal and from the suspect okay if it is in, in a crime scene what we will see first we will see the samples around the crime scene crime place okay what we will collect we 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 used to collect the blood or the hairs or the fingerprintings may remember only from the fingerprintings if the criminal if he is wearing any gloves we cannot um take the uh, fingerprinting sample okay so this will be the be best method to find out who is criminal so so this is one sample from where we have collected this sample from the crime scene okay so uh, for example i'm telling you so this is one sample uh if we have any doubt on any person like what we can say we can say this as suspect okay so this is the fragments dna fragments or dna separation on the electrophoresis media or electrophoresis tray um by matching suspect we cannot justify by doing the dna frag dna fragments by taking only one suspect we can 
match this uh, sample from two or three suspects if you have if we have doubts on two or three persons first we have to collect their samples and we have to match with this dna sample collected from the crime scene okay so if it get match how it get match suppose suppose we are in the chromosome 7 so chromosome 7 will be we are going to draw the chromosome like this when we draw the dna on the electrophoresis or we if we want to understand better about the dna fragments we used to write the chromosome like this this is one chromosome homologous chromosome this is one homologous chromosome so suppose it has five to six blocks of base space 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is the block indicates the base pair okay so so in your uh, ncrt diagram also they have given like that that i'll mention i'll uh, describe in the class okay by repeating one more time about the dna fingerprinting uh, only for this only today we'll understand only this much okay so these blocks uh, resembles the base pairs so what we are doing we have traced out the dna fingerprinting on the nitrocellulose membrane what then what we are observing we are like we are comparing both so how to compare that to compare that we have to hybridize that DNA fingerprinting with the labeled VNTR probe. Here it is, labeled VNTR probes. After hybridization, the next thing is detection of hybridized DNA fragments by autoradiography. Detection of DNA detection of hybridized DNA fragments hybridized DNA fragments by detection of hybridized DNA fragments by autoradiography 